and welcome back to The Independent Pianist. My name is Cole Anderson. Today we return to look at some of the enigmatic, elusive music by the Catalan composer Federico Mombo. Before we talk about this music, please do consider supporting this project. Uh, you can do that in a number of ways. I have an account through Patreon.com uh, where you can sign up for a monthly pledge. Uh, the address is www.patreon.com forward slash independent pianist or you can make single donations through PayPal using my link in the description box below. Thank you very much for taking the time to support me in any way that you can. Every donation, however small, will help me to continue bringing you this content. Also, if you are an ambitious pianist yourself and if you're interested in studying with me one-on-one uh, -on -one over Zoom, I do still have some space in my studio, so that's another great way to support my work and uh, also further your study of the instrument. I'm also always available for performances, whether solo or in collaboration, so if you'd like to hear me play in person some of the music that I upload on this channel each week, just email me at cole at independentpianist.com and we can arrange something. So now on to the music for today. Uh, Federico Mompo was a very special artist. I've talked a little bit before on this channel about the magical effect that his piano performances have had on me at various times. And with today's upload, I'd like to go a little bit more in detail about what makes his music so special compositionally. Mambo was really an outlier in the general trend towards combating the emotional monumentalism common among the late Romantics, epitomized by figures like Wagner, Bruckner, and Mahler, among others. This musical rebellion against this kind of overheated emotion was led primarily by musicians of the new French school. So Debussy, of course, and Ravel were major figures in the early days, uh, but then there were also the members of the so-called Les Six, uh, Auric, Doré, Onigar, uh, Mio, Tylefer, and of course, Francis Poulenc. But probably the most important influence on Mambo, besides those figures I just named, was the eccentric Eric Satie. Both Satie and Mompo were forerunners of what turned into a very rich tradition in the latter part of the 20th century, the tradition, of course, of minimalism. In both of these composers' works, all technical complexity is completely stripped away. The essential elements of the music are presented with utmost clarity. The intention, of course, is to remove affectation and any semblance of artificiality. They did this in very different ways, though. In Satie's case, after his earlier mystical works, which are very close to my heart, and also accepting his marvelous nocturnes, his last set of pieces, there's always a kind of tongue-in-cheek roguishness about his music. I, I always feel like he's laughing at himself a bit and also at his audience. He's always close to a wink and a smile. With Mambo, it's completely different. There's a kind of childlike quality to his music, which is completely disarming, an entirely unjaded appreciation to his view of the world. To uh, paraphrase a favorite quotation of mine from Dickens, uh, it's as if Mompo, throughout his life, retained a certain freshness and gentleness to his character, a capacity for being pleased. Uh, all of these qualities were an inheritance that he preserved from his childhood. Indeed, I think that's one of the great lessons of this music. I think we all can retain or relearn these qualities if we choose to do so, and it will uh, bring a sort of beauty and peace to our lives whenever we can find these qualities again. In keeping with this perspective, the musical materials that Mampo uses are frequently ordinary, uh, but they are removed from their typical associations in such a way that they become totally extraordinary. A major or minor chord, for example, no longer has the same meaning often enough. It's removed from its usual connotations. So it almost feels besides the point sometimes to analyze this music in the typical way, using Roman numerals or chord names, for example. And this is particularly true of this piece, the Cans Magique, or the Magic Songs, which was Mampo's first published work in 1919. Uh, don't be fooled by the title, they are songs only in the very loosest sense. In fact, these pieces have an odd kind of incantatory quality to them. The melodic lines 
seem like nascent outlines of melodies that are never fully fleshed out. Instead, they remain incomplete and kind of enigmatic, primal in their evocative power. You might also notice another thing about the score. There's very few bar lines in this piece. Mampo was one of these composers who disliked the rigid constriction of musical flow into regularly recurring boxes. Uh, instead, he wanted the music to weave freely through the air, only occasionally structuring it into strict recurring patterns. So I'll finish off with a little bit of a disclaimer. Experiencing this music is really unlike any other musical experience. You have to release any preconceived ideas about how music should sound and give yourself over completely to this entirely different experience. An experience that relies much more on instinct and a primal emotional reaction to sound than to intellectual constructions and form. Having said that, I think this music is deeply powerful and can even be transformative in the right circumstances. So please enjoy the music, leave me some comments and let me know what you think about it. Uh, be sure to like the video and subscribe, and I will see you next week for something completely different.